What's the most outrageously expensive thing you've seen in person? The set designs for fashion shows. When I was working as a scenic carpenter I was always amazed at the amount of money spent on scenery that will go right into the trash for events that last 30 minutes to a couple of hours. We covered an empty warehouse floor in Manhattan with something like 50,000 square feet of beveled oak boards in one instance. Material costs aside, we had a crew of around 20 guys making at minimum $25 slash HR working for days around the clock to make it happen. The same people attending these shows will post on social media about environmental waste and global warming. The Patek Philip Grandmaster chime in steal it and only watch showing in London. All the big watch companies do a one-off for the charity auction, and Patek usually only do watches in precious metals. A grand complication in steel is truly a one-off. It sold for 31 million Swiss francs, close to 35 meter USD. I actually held it in my gloved hand. Whilst obviously nothing like that price, the most casually rich thing I came across amongst my friends, who are all varying degrees of working class to wealthy but nothing overtly ridiculous, also involved a Patek. I was traveling to the wedding of two friends, I live in the capital city, but they were getting married in the countryside. The bride calls me to ask if I can pick up her wedding day watch for the groom as she'd forgotten to collect it. It still needed to be paid for, and she was trying to work out ways to transfer me cash instantly to pick it up, but the bank wouldn't do an instant transfer for the amount. Thinking she was overcomplicating things I said why don't I just pay for it on my credit card then you can pay me back whenever. I joked as long as it doesn't cost more than 20 grand as that's my credit limit haha. <laughs> and she said ah, okay, don't worry about it, mum can detour past and she'll pick it up. At the reception I clocked a brand new paddock on the groom's wrist. He's not even into watches. The CEO of my husband's company years back held a Christmas party at this house. At the time, the company was a startup and there was maybe 20 employees. He had original Picasso artwork on his walls. I have no idea how much they were actually worth, but I thought that was pretty cool. I got to see one I studied in art school in a friend of a friend's home. I was in awe. So, like, you eat your pop tarts in the same room as your inherited Picasso? My high school orchestra teacher, who is also concert master for the Arkansas Symphony, was loaned a 12 million dollar Stradivarius anonymously for an upcoming performance. I wasn't allowed to touch it, but I got a solid look at it, as well as heard it from 3 feet away. Concert master for the Arkansas Symphony, very impressive. But I wasn't aware that Stradivarius ever made banjos. I worked as a sound engineer at a classical radio station in the 90s, and we had a guest musician in the studio, who brought a museum loan violin to play live. He and the host, who both spent some time drinking and talking before performance time, thought it was fun to nonchalantly hand me the violin to hold, while he got situated and ready to play on air. I just took it in one hand, and moved mixed hands with my free hand, treating it the same as I would a middle schooler's rental instrument. Carefully, I respect all musical instruments, but not especially careful. I handed it back a few seconds later. No fanfare. They chuckled together as they told me, just before we went on air, that this instrument I was uneventfully handling was irreplaceable and worth millions. I held it again later, like it was a newborn baby. Damn. My sister used to work on super yachts. I'd go visit her every now and again, and stay on the boat during off-season, in crew quarters. This was about half a billion euros worth of boat, and it was pretty damn fancy. It had glass flooring and staircases that turned opaque if you stood on them, so people couldn't look up your skirt, or the usual fancy boat shit like a spa and German movies that hadn't even been released at the cinema yet. I guess it's not entirely outrageous, but I went to a family owned aquarium store a couple months ago to get some medicine for my guppies and they were selling one year old arowana fish for $6,000 each. I'm probably just ignorant when it comes to prices of exotic fish, but I was quite surprised considering they were surrounded by guppies and goldfish whose lives are worth approximately $2.50 each. Outside of the crown jewels and art museums, I went to Harrods and saw a chandelier worth 50,000 pounds. Edit, some people are taking this quite literally. 
to be clear, yes, of course I've seen more expensive items, hence the crown jewels. This wasn't a grand hall chandelier. This was something you could hang over a standard dining room table. A freshly drafted NFL rookie stayed at a hotel I worked at and partied a little too hard. When checking out he left over 100k in jewelry in the room. I was tasked with going and getting it and securing it till someone from his posse could come get it. I wore it for a few hours for fun. Heavy af and so fucking shiny. A bracelet that was wider than the biggest watch covered in diamonds, and a chain that went past my sternum and probably one slash two in in thickness also completely encrusted in diamonds. Years ago, I apprenticed as a luthier. The shop I worked in was almost entirely guitar repair, and one day a woman came in with a violin. She said it was her grandfather's, or maybe great-grandfather's? I can't recall, and he had played in the Detroit Symphony. It was obvious that the fingerboard had been replaced at some point, and the instrument was really old. Like, really old. My boss knew a guy who specialized in violins, so he drove a couple hours to have him take a look at it. The guy told him to get it out of our shop immediately and send them to a specialist in Chicago. He said it was early to mid 1700s and was an exceptional instrument. Everyone has heard of Stradivarius violins, but not many people have heard of Guanari, his rival. Apparently, there are still a few lost Guanari violins out there, and this guy thought that this was one of them. My boss trusted this guy, and I trusted my boss. He has toured as the personal guitar tech for the like of Kenny Rogers, Big and Rich, Robert Randolph, etc. So we called this lady up, told her where to go, and gave it back to her. We didn't want to get her hopes up too high just in case the guy was wrong, and I think she decided not to look into it further, I was under the impression that a trip to Chicago was not financially feasible. I'll never know if I held a real guanary or not, but if I did, I held a dollar sign 10 million plus violin. In Aspen, Colorado a few years back in a small antique store. We walk in, and the guy working there never even acknowledges us while he's casually chatting on his phone. I see a carved wood eagle sculpture about 2 feet tall and 1 foot wide. I flip over the price tag $125,000. I laughed out loud, looked at my friend, and said this isn't our kind of store and promptly left. Aspen is the weirdest place I've ever visited. I'll tell ya where. Some place warm. A place where the beer flows like wine. Where beautiful women instinctively flock like the salmon of Capistrano. I'm talking about a little place called Aspen. I attended a wedding that was rumored to cost well over a million dollars. There was two venues, if I remember there was 9 plus member band flown in from New York City, another strings band during the ceremony, and a third trumpet band that escorted the walk to the reception. An artist oil painted the reception live at the party. The food was incredible. Each table was over the top with guests, having their own glass engraved with their name to take home. They gave people dancing shoes you could take home. It was incredible, and probably the most expensive private event I will ever attend. I'm sure I'm missing some other details but everything was over the top. Most expensive party I've been at was a corporate function. They had a restaurant crawl through Beverly Hills with a different course at each restaurant. Finished up at the Beverly Wilshire. After that the company had a private party in Rodeo Drive. Shut the street down, and paid the shops to stay open. The whole week was nuts, it was a convention slash exhibition in 2000 during the initial internet bubble. One night I went to a party in one of the famous nightclubs with celebrity lookalikes handing our drinks. Another night a company had hired a penthouse suite in some famous hotel and got a celebrity chef in to cook, Wolfgang Puck I Ike. Another company hired Universal Studios Park for 50 people all evening. Another hired Ketu for a meal, or whatever liner is berthed up in that area. It was my first business trip, and I was gobsmacked. A 2.5 million dollar mansion in Missouri. My roommate and I played dress up, and went to the showing for the free food. When we asked about the entire first story being stone, including the furniture, we were told it was, because the river overflowed and flooded the mansion every year. Everything was made of stone, so it could be cleaned easily. Why the fuck would anyone spend money on that? I worked security at an art museum and we exhibited this little Chinese teacup with a rooster on it. Little ass thing was worth over 36 million dollars. 
Apparently there were only 4 in the whole world. I felt unsafe around it, like I'm not risking my life for this stupid cup. Did you ever learn the artist, age of the thing, context etc etc as to why it was so damned expensive? A wealthy couple had a pair of Steinway Concert Grand Model D pianos at opposite ends of their spacious living room. Neither the husband nor his wife played. The pianos, valued at about $175,000 each, were just there for show, and when they hired someone like me to play piano for an occasional cocktail slash dinner party, catered a high school graduation party. We did fried chicken and mashed potatoes, so had no idea how we ended up serving food in a mansion. Turns out the daughter was going to Auburn, so they wanted something southern. Out of 200 people there, they ate maybe 4 full plates of food. They had another catering, bring the real party food. TL, doctor, people drop 3k on food, just for the novelty of it. I live in New York City, and like to be a tourist sometimes, so my husband and I went to the 5th Avenue Tiffany's. I don't even wear jewelry, but I like shiny things and are very nice. Clearly board sales associate, let me try on a yellow diamond, two and a half carat engagement ring. For fun, I asked the price, and it was $65,000. I can't even imagine how rich you would have to be, to have that as your engagement ring and that be a normal thing. My wife and I were walking around the Vegas Strip, and went into Caesar's Palace, just exploring. We were carrying those super tall colorful daiquiris from Fat Tuesday. Basically we both looked like Cousin Eddie from Vegas Vacation. We wandered into an art gallery, where they had a collection of sculptures of Cirque du Soleil performers by Richard McDonald. We were the only ones in there, so the board curator showed us around. So we are walking around, very shit faced, sipping on daiquiris, and saying very interesting. And we just bought a house for that much. A 12 year old Russian kid who came to stay at a summer camp I worked at, that has a 64,000 pound Ralux. We later found out, that his 14 year old cousin was actually his 28 year old bodyguard, and he was the son of a Russian diplomat. All around nice kid, though. How did they pass off a 28 year old ex military guy as a teenager? F 35 and F 22, both at air shows. F-35s were parked and didn't fly, but I got to see the F-22 showing off at a different air show. The way I describe it is it's an IRL cheat code plane. It doesn't even look real. I'll add 4 B-2s that flew over me. That's 8 billion dollars that flew over. I used to work for a billionaire. They loved to purchase very old wines, think 90 plus years old, random jewelry for their spouse, a solid gold sturgeon caviar holder dollar sign 1m plus cars, etc. Generally all through auction at Sotheby's. It was my job to organize their purchases. It was interesting to see what crazy things rich people spent their money on. I may or may not have tried on the jewelry. I play Magic the Gathering. My decks aren't expensive, but they are not cheap either. Normally around 4 to 700 dollars. Then I played against a guy who had a deck worth around $29,000. Crazy thing is, that this was his first deck, and he bought all of the cards recently. He didn't even play that often either. So imagine dropping almost 30 grand on something, that you lose maybe once, or twice a month. Went to Disney World a few years back, and got a glass slipper from Aribus Brothers. One of the items they had, was a jewel replica of the castle. It costs more than $30,000. And don't get me wrong, the thing looked wicked, but I'm not spending more on a decorative piece that will live behind glass, for my own sanity, than I spent on my car. $37,500. It's limited edition. It's on my list of things I would buy if I had stupid amounts of money, just for the novelty. That's a third of the total cost of my current home lol, and more than I make myself in a year. I fucking love that glass shop, I have a couple really nice pieces I've bought myself over the years. I shook Bill Gates hand in 8th grade. He visited our school, to make a donation to our district. Haven't came across anything more expensive since then. I was in a room with Bill Gates. Me and my buddy at college, went to his event. We were sitting near front row, and at the end of the event I stood up and attempted to talk with him, but I followed my buddy's lead and promptly left the auditorium. 
I can't prove it, but the richest man in the world considered for a brief moment two college kids. That was my interaction I roll. Oh well. There's always his reddit ammers. A Rolex deep sea sea dweller worth around 14,600 that my dad gifted to his dad. His dad didn't like the watch, so didn't wear it, and then my uncle decided to get it fixed using its warranty, and now wears it. I'd read a book full of short stories of family histories of Rolexes. They always have a tale like this, and mix a bit of each member's tale of it. Also fun there is an og techno group called Drixia who has a discography surrounding the Drixia and people with a release, called Deep Sea Dweller. To get a full set of Mint original records by this group would get towards a fairly decent chunk of the value of that watch lol. I saw a lady show up to Walmart with a McLaren, wearing a 20k outfit, a 100k person the best thing as she came to buy lotion. Reminds me of when saw a Lambo parked outside a Home Depot. I thought what's this guy buying? A single extension cord? I went to a Patek Philip exhibit in New York City. They are among the top high watch brands, with watches that go for tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some go well over the million dollar mark. They are stunning pieces of art and machinery. When I told my mom where I was going, she asked if I was going to buy one. Watches aren't my mom's thing, so it's not like she knew the brand. I had to rein my laughter in hard before telling her that the cheapest watch that might possibly be there was more expensive than any car anyone in our family had ever bought. Nope, I was only going so I could do an AAH over amazing timepieces. I did bring home their info slash display catalog that was made for the exhibit. It's basically a soft cove. A glass of rare brandy in a Swarovski crystal glass. Apparently you can keep the glass after. It was 10k. I don't get the Swarovski hype. In the UK, there is a chain of jewelers called Warren James, and they sell Swarovski jewelry at a massive discount. Like, less than half price. Which makes me think their jewelry surely can't be that valuable then. Flew into France, and saw a Bugatti Veyron at a nearby petrol station. The owner was surrounded by people trying to take photos of it one of my weirdest experiences was driving in a part of New Jersey that was about as middle as middle class could be and watching a bright yellow Lamborghini Countach in front of me pull into a warm at parking lot. I felt like I had witnessed something that had never happened before in history. I can't remember its name exactly but in Praha I saw a radiance of the sun. A face mantle piece job that was donated to the church a couple of hundred years ago. What's so fancy? A gold frame either the shape of the sun with over 6,000 diamonds on it. It does not have a price. Apparently it is priceless edit. I found a photo of it on my phone. It's called a diamond dispensary. This particular one is from 1699 with over 6,000 diamonds. When I went to the rich part of the city this one house had native art doors, specifically West Coast Canada native art. I'm native and my aunt owns a native art studio, so I already know this is expensive, since it was nearly the entire surface area. I would estimate that the doors on this house cost $60,000 to $100,000. That's what it's like in my neighborhood. Huge homes worth tens of millions with sculptures and West Coast native art fruits in Japan. When I left Japan I took a picture of a bunch of watermelons I bought, some of them to pickle or turn into jam. I put it up on Facebook because they would have been a solid 500 euros in Japan, but they cost like 10 euros here. It's not that Japan can't grow them, it's because they throw away like 90% of their fruits because they're not perfect. I saw a cantaloupe in Japan for 1,500,000 yen, about $15,000 at the time. Likely a gift melon. Gift giving is common in Japan, and sometimes people give producers gifts, so there is a market for high-end melons. The expensive ones usually have no defects, and are the highest grade of melon there is. Highest grade Uberi King melons generally cost about $45k. Oh man. I work in luxury consignment in the San Francisco area and at least once a month I have some disgustingly wealthy person come in to consign their Hermes Birkin bag with Himalayan crocodile skin. We had one in last month or so that was consigned for $400,000. A fucking handbag. In addition to that, at one point we had the Raffsman's 2001 Ride 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 bomber jacket which was consigned for $35,000. 
an Amitz class aircraft carrier. I lived on one of them and worked in the reactor department. Can't remember what the exact cost of one of those ships is, but it's well in excess of a billion dollars. 3.5-4 billion. And about 2 billion to refuel one. On my honeymoon in St. Lucia we went to Merrigat Bay for a day, had lunch on a place looking at multiple yachts parked in the marina. I had never seen a yacht in person before. One of them was like a small cruise ship, just fucking massive. Opera and George Foreman have homes there, so it cold been one of this. Growing up in Newport, Rhode Island, they're the cheating option of going with their historical mansions, breakers worth about $150 million, but there were a plethora of yachts coming in and out of the harbor that were worth a ton as well. One that immediately comes to mind is Judge Judy's yacht that worth about $16 million itself. Lord know what she has inside of it. I was fortunate enough to be a valet, so if we are going for the most expensive I've personally experienced, probably a decked out Rolls Royce that I was allowed to park. Either that or a semi-rare Ferrari.